So GNOME 40 is one of the more popular desktop environments in the Linux community. I would probably even argue that it's the most popular desktop environment when you look at all the distributions as a whole. Uh, now usually on GNOME 40 I like to have an extension called dash to dock, which brings up your, if you come over here to activities and you see your uh, dash here at the bottom, your dock here at the bottom, it will put that on your desktop. So when you come to the bottom of the screen, it should pop up like on a Mac OS style of desktop environment. Under normal circumstances, what I would do like in the GNOME like 30 or GNOME 3 era of the desktop environment is I'd come over here to GNOME shell extension and I'd search for dash to dock. Now if you're on GNOME 40, dash to dock doesn't appear because it's currently incompatible uh, through GNOME shell extensions, the website for GNOME 40 dis um, desktop environments. So we do have a workaround. It has been forked and it is compatible, so I'm going to take you through how to do that right now. Let's get our terminal open. Let's start by updating our repositories. So we'll say sudo pacman s y y, and that'll make sure all of our repositories are up to date. And now uh, we need a package in order to make this work called sassc. So let's go ahead and search for that first sudo pacman dash s s and we're looking for s s s a s s c a lot of s's and we see that here in the community repository s a s s c now this package might be called something different if you're on a debian based system or if you're on a fedora based system i'm on arch so this is the package that i need so you'll have to consult, you know, probably Google to figure out which SASS package you need for your particular system. But if you're on Arch, we can install that one. You can already see it installed. But let's go ahead and run the command. sudo pacman dash s s a s s c. When you run that, uh, I'm not going to hit yes right now. I've already got it installed. I don't need to reinstall it. Just make sure you get that installed. And we can move on to the next step here. At that point, uh, if you hit ls, you'll see the contents of your current directory, your home directory, and you should see your downloads folder right here. Let's go ahead and change directory into the download folder. So we'll say cd downloads. So now we're in our downloads folder, and we're going to clone into EWLS's, <laughs> EWLSH's uh, GitHub here. And he's got some directions down to install from the source, which is probably distribution neutral. Um, but we're going to just do it how I've done it on Arch, the way I know that it works. So let's go ahead and clone into his repository here. We're going to say git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash ew lsh forward slash dash to doc forward slash. And that'll clone into his repository and drop that folder into our downloads folder. So now if we list the contents of this directory, we'll see the dash to doc folder listed there. So let's go ahead and change, director, change directories into that folder. We're going to say cd dash to doc. Hit enter. We're now in the dash to doc folder, and we're going to run this command here, git checkout ewlsh forward slash gnome dash 40. Hit enter. Uh, now we need to make the package and install the package, so we're going to say make first. Just run the command make. And now we're going to run the command make install. So after that runs, you have dash to doc installed on your system, but you won't see it in extensions yet until you reboot your system. You'll see that all I have manually installed is my alphabetical app grid. Once you um, reboot your system, you'll see dash to doc there. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot my system and meet you guys back right here. Okay, so we just rebooted our system. Let's open up the extensions package and now you'll see dash to dock here on the extension so you can turn that on or off and you'll notice that I've got my dash to dock down here 
pop open the settings, you can play around with this a little bit. Um, I always come over here to appearance and change some things. By default, you might not have shrink the dash on there. I like shrinking the dash just so it's a little bit smaller, it takes up a little bit less screen real estate, which is important to me since I only have a 1080 panel. Uh, you might also see use built-in theme. I don't like the built-in theme. I'm using uh, whatever GNOME's default theme is. I think it's Adwaita, Adwaita, not sure how to pronounce it. But I usually turn that off and change a couple of other things. What I also change here is I'll come down to uh, custom opacity and I select from default, I go to dynamic. And then if I hit this little settings icon here, you can change the minimum and maximum opacity, which means the minimum opacity is what it'll look like when there's no collisions. The maximum opacity will be what it looks like when there are collisions. So if I start dragging this down over to my dock, you'll notice that the opacity changes from 35% to 80% right there before it disappears. I think that's a nice little animation touch. Um, just as a visual cue that you're about to shrink the dash out of your view. Uh, you can change this if you don't like any opacity. If you just like a clear dock, that's cool too. But what's nice is, again, it'll detect that collision, turn it black, and away it goes. Um, so I like to leave mine around like 30%. I think I had it at 35%. Just a nice little uh, transparency effect there, just to make it stand out from my desktop background. But you guys can play around with the settings at your leisure and get it really where you like it. But I think for usability sake, uh, Dash to Dock is a necessary extension for GNOME just to minimize the amount of clicks or button presses you have to do to get to your uh, start icons here or your start programs. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly pressing the super key or you're constantly going to be coming over here to the activities uh, button just to run programs, which I think is a little bit silly, but I understand GNOME's desire to have a clean, minimal desktop uh, environment, not environment, but a desktop layout with no you know, desktop icons, no panel, just a blank canvas on which you can work. But again, for my work product or for my workflow, I like to have this here at the bottom just for quick access. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video.